Welcome to 27th Letters Podcast. Uh, today we have a special guest, Trey Mission. Uh, by the way, my name is Landry Onigende Bay. And uh, yes, Trey Mission um, is one of the, what I would say, one of the HNIC of the grime scene, no? No? I wouldn't say that. No? No, I wouldn't say that. At least for out here. Well, there's not a scene out here to be. Yeah, there. but but I'm just saying it's you, like you rep that. That's that's because when you went out there doing your thing in London, you know. Yeah, I mean? but you know what though? I do so much. I do I do so much that, and I'm so musical that there's a lot of people that complain about how not how little I actually do rep. That that should be more grimy and that that should be, you know? But music for me started before grime started as a thing, Mm -hmm. period. And before I found out about it. Way Mm -hmm. before I found out about it, you know? Okay, before we get that far, let's so, you know? (laughs) Sometimes uh, uh, one of the people I interview is Cabby, Cabra Richards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I sent him the video just to get some critique. And the last time he's like, yo, when you start your your show, get right into the question. And I did it again. Fucked up, Cabby, you know? So I haven't come, I'm just like having conversation, you know, <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Right. So, but uh, yeah, yo, um, the way I start off my, uh, the, the, the question, in my line of question is usually, I don't, no one can start their, their story without their mother's story. Yeah. So I usually say, who's your mother? And then we go on from there to how you, yeah. your upbringing and whatnot. So let's start with, you know, yeah. that's life as you, you remember who's your mother and where were you born and so on yeah. and so forth. Well, my mom came here. In the late seventies, from Trinidad. Okay, okay. Right? And my dad came here in the late eighties. Okay. So, but my dad's from Jamaica. Okay. Right. So, it's funny because I only recently found out. I knew that on my grandpa's side in Trinidad, I knew that his people came from Venezuela and also Calcutta, and then okay. so they look a little different from how my grandma's side looks. So okay. that was like the explanation that I got or whatever. And okay. my last name is Karen Bocas, right? Okay. It's a big name in Trinidad. So as far as just, we have so much family and we have important people in our family and the families that are related to us is all neatly traced. You know, the Laras and other stuff. Okay, okay. Know so the you know the plat- uh, family tree. Yeah, so I knew the explanation for the Karen Bocas side. So my grandma's side of the family, their, their name is Samuel. And I just found out that they really come from St. Vincent, hmm. where we, or my grandma was a first generation Trini. Okay. Right? So, and the Karambokas family, they come from more kind of the country, a place called Santa Cruz. Mm-hmm. And I found out, and I knew because some of them lived there, but I found out my grandma's side of the family, they're more town people, okay. like in the city in Port of Spain. So, my grandpa's a musician and everything, so my mom was a musician growing up. Okay. You know? And uh, my mom, too, was, like, into, like, British rock and stuff when she okay, was a teenager. Okay, 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 okay. So her so musical this is palette... on the island? This, this is, is when she island. just... When she come to Canada. Okay, okay, so when okay. she came to Canada, they moved to Don Mills. They, my family, that's where we come from, you know? Every one of my family... I know you rep it. Don Mills. Don you know? Mills. <laughs> I just... All I know my whole life, you know, that's where we've been, so... Okay, okay. And, um, There's a my, couple of bands that I know from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. The men, they all tell me. They all yeah, tell me. But yeah. in my dad, uh, my dad was from Jamaica, but he's a cataraki man. Okay. That was okay. his, you know, he's okay. one of the men that started that whole thing out there, Block okay, 13 and all okay, of that. You know? Okay, okay, okay. You go around there, you ask people about Chucky, and they'll tell you, you know? So, okay. Um, okay. I might so, know him too. So for me, that I was uh, like... I, I, I was I was out around Teesdale. Yeah, and that's yeah. right across the bridge. If it, and if he's, it was in the nineties too, so then yeah, so he I was did, out he, there. Did he play ball? No, no. My dad is a real yacht man. He only oh. come here in the late eighties, <laughs> you know. So I don't even know if my dad plays soccer. But okay, um, okay, okay. Yeah, so like, yeah, that was my my mom was like super into music, and that just kind of rubbed off onto me okay. when I was a kid, you know. So, okay. so they met here, right? Yeah, they met here. How did they meet? Um. Do you know that story? I do, I do, I do. Because uh, my dad first came here to work in like Calgary and rural places, like okay, on the farms. Do, on the farms. Mm-hmm. And when he's on the farm, I'm still, asking, which is still being which done. Which is still what's going on. You go up north, you'll see yeah. them at the Timberlands. All the time, shit, you know? I see them. So my uh, my pops, 
he was on a farm and there's other Jamaican people and they're telling him, yo, come, there's, we could go hustle up a thing in Toronto and let's go to, let's go out there. There's a place that my cousins live, must have been something like that. You know, when people link up. So my dad ends up in Cataraki. So my mom lived in Cataraki at the time. Mm -hmm. That was like one of her first places outside of her mom's house. Mm -hmm. You know, her and um, my aunt Sandra. So from there... That's where they met at a at a party in the neighborhood, you know. My mom lived on Layton, to be exact. If you know about Cataract, you know about Layton, yeah, 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 Fur yeah, yeah, Valley yeah. and all of these places. Right by the you station, know? yeah. So my mom lived right there in Layton. So then, uh, yeah, that's how they met in a party. Oh, just you know, black people shit, like you know, young people, you know, it's crazy. culture. Just, you know, I, I just had Daniel, like you know, it's on a, on a, on a uh, page there. I just had Daniel on it. He's telling me, tell me about his parents, and it's pretty much the same thing, you know. That's they the old Toronto story. You know what I mean? That's pretty much the same story. Yeah. You know? It's like it's crazy. So they met, got married. Was like yeah. How they, long? They, they never got married, but they maybe would have. But my dad ended up getting dipped. Word. When I was young, you know. So, so you, how many children did your mom have? With your dad? One. I'm my own. I'm my you mom's only child. Yeah. So. You, my dad has other kids, but... But so did, did uh, you, uh, your mom had, uh, got pregnant and then you were born? Yeah, yeah. And then she, how long before... He got dipped? Less than six years. So you had a couple of years with him, though? A couple that I barely remember, if, oh, yeah? you know what I mean? Okay. But as so I got older... So you don't have, like, any early memories of him well, distinctively? Like, of who he is, type of character, you know? Well, the thing is... I'm going to try to tell this part as quick as possible, too. But... For a while, we lost contact with my dad after he got deported. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back then there wasn't no social media or nothing. So it's like, so if you lose someone's number, and they move, you're not really finding them, you know? So that was kind of what happened. My dad moving around and, you know, trying to make it happen in Jamaica. I guess it was just hectic. And we ended up losing contact with him. But a woman that we know from the area, she was in a party in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. She went back to Jamaica one day on her vacation and... My, she met my dad in a dance by chance, and he said, "Yo, look at my baby mother, my, you know what I mean?" And she said, "What? That's that's Trayvon and Halcyon." So she made the link back, and we got the number that's and everything. You know, it's crazy how things happen. Crazy. So then, when I'm a teenager, early teenage years, I started so talking to him on the phone and stuff. So years have gone by. Mm -hmm. So at this point, did, what what did you think was going on with your dad? Like, I knew, I knew. So I you knew the story. Yeah, no one just... hid it from me. Yeah. No one hit it. Did you me. ever try to? Like, I mean, you, you did you ever think to yourself like you'd want to go to there and look for him? Yeah, yeah. I always, bro. It's crazy because I always had that thought in my mind of like, even though I didn't remember him, I always had this like feeling inside of me of like I was completely against anyone replacing my dad. You know, so people in my family that were just trying to be supportive and trying to be, you know, fill mm -hmm. that that void. Mm -hmm. I would just push back against it, you know. And, so the um, male role models, you didn't, you didn't want you like, yo, I got, I got my dad. Like, you didn't have any male. My role. thing was more, I don't got my dad, and I'm fine with that. You know what I'm saying? So, but what it was as well was that if I, I wanted, I would, I wanted the dad only if it was my actual dad. I was, I didn't. I was just against it. Something about it just made me feel weird. You know, like... It's I remember, like, if it ain't him, you don't want nothing. Yeah. I remember one time, uh, it was like Father's Day. And, you know, they do stuff for the kids on Father's Day. All the dads come in and stuff. And uh, my godfather was going to come in instead. How old were you at that point? I was like, great. Two, seven, okay. maybe. And I remember I just being really upset about the fact that I was going there with someone that wasn't my dad. Even though I love my godfather to death and he did a lot for but me. But you, you just know, know the fact. Is. Yeah, I'm not because I was a kid, but I was very aware of stuff, and I'm just like, is, I don't want that sympathy. Like it's just, you know, you don't like role play. Don't yeah, play. yeah, role play. We're not yeah. role play. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. I feel that. I feel that. So yeah, so you started talking to him again. Yeah, so I started talking to him again, and then as I got a little older, as I got to like 18, around that time, 19, and life is getting a little bit more real. So yeah, have you seen? Did you see him? Did you go At out to see him? At this time, I hadn't. So as I'm getting older now, getting to 18 and stuff, and life is getting a little bit more real, I'm starting to see more value in, like, just being able to reason with him. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, but there's, there's stuff you want to talk 
talk to him about that you probably don't can't talk to your moms about. Right. And on top of this, I have family that I've never met, you know? And I've always been really big on, like, the mystery of, like, where I come from. As even just from, like, the immediate tree and even way back. You know, I've always been, like, intrigued it's by that. It's been said, and... An unexamined life is a life not worth living. Mm, mm, mm. So you're doing what you're supposed to. And yeah, I, so, and that's why you can see it in your music. Family. Yeah, so I was a man. I like from young, from since Google's around, I'd go on Google and type in my last name, see mm -hmm. who I could find. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, and like see what my family's out there doing that might be noteworthy to have someone write about mm -hmm. and stuff you know and i found out about lots of sick stuff you know my cousin doing sick and cricket that i've never met you yeah know, things like that that's crazy yeah. so so you caught up to your dad eventually so as i'm getting older now we start talking more and then when i got to about 2021 20, now i have a little money of my own i can do things a little better because my mom was apprehensive about sending me out there you know and because my dad he's a raw guy you know so as a mom with that you know what i mean it's like you she I don't know that if guy she that, trusted it fully, you know, uh, because she just knows. Now that I know him too, I realize why. It's because I've heard that when I was small, my dad was more strict. But the way my dad is with his kids is more like man to man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's not nitpicking little things that you're doing. Oh, you're smoking or drinking. It's not that. It's like, but know what you're doing. You with know what you're doing. Yeah. Know what you're doing. Know your choices. And I believe in that. Don't just look at the children as children. Look at them as little people. Yeah, that's what and I try to do with don't my fake son the now. Funk, don't fake the funk with them. Yeah, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? There's no don't, need to. Why? There's no need they to. They could Google it. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? And, and my mom is the they come back way. and make you look like a fool. Yeah, right? he, exactly. Because they're going to find out one day that you're not always right. You know what I mean? So there's no point acting like you are. You know? Don't fake the funk. And my mom is my mom is like that too, you know. My mom is kind of like you know, you figure it out and I guide you, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but obviously, as a mom, she's a so, little apprehensive. So, growing up in those years without your without your dad, I was able living with your mom. I was the relationship with your mom, being the oh. her only son, and you can see how she pretty, she must have been really protective. Of, of yeah, yeah. We had a we had a good relationship. I would say a really good relationship. She allowed you to go go chill with a man name eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you mean my pops? No, I'm just oh, saying man's just, on the block. I the was ends. always I was always allowed. You know why? Because I have uncles that okay. are from the ends from way back. Okay, so okay. even though I lived like they so it's like a village to type of thing for you. But even like my uncles lived in an ends that's a little up the road. Mm -hmm. It's not my ends, but I was always trusted to go there on my. If I mm -hmm, want to go mm -hmm. by my uncle, my uncle said, yo, follow it outside to the ball court. Their man know me now to this day from there that, you know what I mean? Okay, and okay, I didn't okay. live there. Which, which my end people lived there. Don Mills and Shepherd. All, in, all around there, my family okay, was. Okay, 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 okay. Havenbrook, Allenberry, Parkway Forest, like Green Plaza, Hall, Hall, um, Pina Plaza, mm -hmm. all of those places. You can, we, part of my family was in okay, those places, you okay, know? Okay, okay, okay. So I was always like, yeah, everyone knew my, my family in the neighborhood. I was always pretty much allowed to do stuff. It was more, you know, it's crazy. When I more came home, is when my mom tried to more have the leash on me. Mm -hmm. Come back, fall back in an hour or whatever. And it's just, and I would never do it, you know? But by the time, bro, with me too, I just, I just wouldn't come home when I was supposed to. So you know what it was? By the time I was 15, it was just like, I was staying out two days at a time and stuff, and she's wilding out. What's, like, what's this guy <laughs> you're doing? Bugging. But, but eventually it was just like, you better know what you're doing. You know, yeah, it's yeah, only yeah, so yeah, much yeah, she could do. You jumped in the big man, big man pants early. Yeah. So, so, so you jumped into that early. When I got, so when I finally got to like 21 years old, I went out to Jamaica, on, on my own. You know what I mean? Okay. Actually, you know what's crazy? Now that I think about it, I actually didn't even buy the ticket. I didn't even buy the ticket. A friend of mine. Bought me the ticket for Somebody my birthday. Somebody volunteered it for you. Because it was my see. birthday. And they said, yo, the ticket's three bills. You want it? And I said, yeah, it was $303. Gift. You know what I'm saying? So you so, went out there quick, fast. Yeah. And that was the first time really seeing my pops. Because the other times didn't count to me, you know? And I remember thinking, when I see him, what do I do? Like, when I roll up and see him, do I, like, hug him? Do I, you know what I mean? I didn't know what to do. I wasn't... Because even though I talked to him on the phone, I don't I still don't feel like I really know him. You know what I mean? Are you emotional? Like, do you express your emotion? I think so. I think so. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, I think... Okay. I, don't, I don't... If I so feel something... So when you saw him, did you, did you cry? Well, no, I didn't because it was... You know what it was? He was just... Too, it was... It was just... My dad's a very mellow person too. Okay. So when you see me, he had a big smile though and he just gave me one of these. 
right? Okay. And he gave me the the thumb. You know what I'm saying? So when I, when I walked up and he just it kind of calmed me down. You know, and I was like, oh yeah, he's just chill. He's blessed. And I don't know how my it's mom is dad, too. Your dad, fam. That's you know? your people. Yeah. So <laughs> the other thing was too, why I wanted to go over there so bad, bro, because I had siblings that I never met, right? So and I talked. And that's what you wanted. That's stuff. what. That's all you're about. You want to explore that side of you and say, who do? Who, who's on my side? Who, exactly. Who's exactly. on my bloodline? You know what I mean? So let's get into the, the music thing. How did you get into music and producing? Because like for most people, they don't know you were making beats before you were actually rapping. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So how did that come about? What like what was it influenced like hip hop wise? What 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 influenced you and brought you to that point to start making beats? Well, bro, that's why I even like how you started it, because bro, all of these questions for me it, it just comes back to family, right? So like I said, my grandpa is a musician. He's part of a famous band in Trinidad called the Lauer Brothers, right? Mm. Everyone in the band is my family. So just the other day, I was at my grandma's house, and she's listening to the radio in Trinidad, and a man had a lyric in his song about my grandpa's band. I'm just walking by them. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So That's dope. And so you I, know I the legendary. That. Yeah, serious music, man. My grandpa's a man to this day. He's probably still playing his flute four times a day, you know? Wow. And he plays enough other instruments. So my mom was into music, but from I was could talk, like I don't remember a time in my life where everyone didn't look at me like the music kid. And my wow. mom tells me the same. From before you could talk, we knew that this is what it was, you know? So, so what was it? What was it? What was it exactly that you were doing as a child that would have, like, you dancing, singing, everything. pretending to be Bob Marley, sitting in my room for hours. So you do the karaoke thing before karaoke thing yep, became yep, a thing? Yep, yep. Okay. Bro, the yep. amount of hours I used to sit in my room with my tape deck or my CD player. You know, and my I was keyboard. thinking. Were you, because I know you did, uh, I want to touch on it, you did an interview with, uh, with uh, Master T. Were you in the era of uh, when watching Rhapsody and you oh, were for sure, VHS for sure. taping? And that was a big thing. Bro. VHS taping, you were there for that? When I met Master <laughs> T, the thing I had to tell them is, fam, I have some of your most legendary moments on VHS right now. It's intact. I don't think, I don't know if Master T understands how much of a legend he is to man's like us in the music, like that come up from that music, because... He was a, he was a guy. You know, I think he understands it, bro, because I think so much people come across him, and express that. Yo, I seen him at um, I was with my, I was actually with my son, and I seen him with his son at the Kensington Market a couple of years ago, and I, I tried to go up to him, but he's like, yo, you know, with my son, so I have to respect him. Like, right, cool. You, mm. know, you have so to raise him too, because that's a T. You know, hopefully we catch up with each other. Hopefully you can sit down with me and do this. You have to raise him too, cause. Almost everyone that tells me they saw him out somewhere tells me they seen him with his kids. And the one time I saw him out somewhere is at Don Mills Center before they broke it down. I seen him in the food court eating. Wow. I was with my mom and we seen, he was with his sons years ago. So, okay. so you're saying about your, uh, the, the music roots coming from your grandpa and then people saying just, just you being so into the music early on. So my mom on. starts buying me guitars from okay. young. Even though I'm breaking all of them, she just buys the next one. Buys the next one. Buys so the like next little one. toy ones. Yeah, the, not toys, but kid size okay, learning okay. guitars. Okay, okay. So, and then I would go into the. You remember the piano shop that they used to have in Scarborough Town Center? There's a big piano store with keyboards and everything. I believe so. I think it used to be near the balloons. It was near an exit though, and uh, I used That's to go in that store, bro, and just like dream. You know, I would look at the stuff and then one of my cousins. He was a musician and an audio engineer. He used to he'd be at the boards at shows, and he used to he lives in in America. He lives in Boston. From, from from I could remember, he's always lived out there. He's a good like thirty five years older than me, but I remember he used to like be on tour with like Ja Rule doing the sound for him on a world tour and stuff. He's done his thing, you know. He used to be a session player, work on enough things, you know. So he saw that music thing in me too, right? And uh, his dad is a big music lover, has a bar and basically a club in his basement. You know, mm -hmm. rest in peace, Michael Cecil. My grandma's a big music lover. And one day he said to me, yo, if you could play any instrument, what would you want if, I could, if you could get any instrument? And I said, yo, when I go in the piano store, I was, I was five years old, six years old. I said, Say I, word. I said, when I go in the piano store, they have these keyboards and they're digital. And he's like, all right, cool, I'm going to get you one. But when you're a youth, enough people tell you they're going to get you stuff, bro. People always tell me they're going to get me stuff. So I just... <laughs> I was, you know what I mean? Bro, the so Christmas that off. came up right after that, 
He didn't call, nothing. Remember, he comes from America. He rang my doorbell with this thing in a box, bro. I just seen the man walking in, and I knew what it was. And I said, nah, he brought it. It was like the craziest day. And that on that keyboard is like where I started. That's learning. divine right there. Yeah. yeah. That keyboard is where I started learning how to turn the musical thoughts in my head into ideas of sound, you know? But at the same time, while all of this is going on, this is why I said family. Again, I, I didn't even think of my cousin when I said this too. I was more thinking of my uncles. Because my uncles used to rap. And them with a whole heap of their brethren's. Used where? To rap. rap where? Here? Yeah. And uh, I remember them like going they had in a group and out Yes. What was yes, the name of the group? group? It was called Fine Print. Okay, okay. Yeah. And they were... Uh, what year was this? They started out like... The earliest I could remember my uncles in the studio was maybe 94. Okay, okay. So this is way back, you know? Okay. And just in the whole Don Mills strip, we have some of the most, the oldest artists doing it for real too. Like men like Don Millian and oh, 20 yeah. Below and yeah. JB. Oh. Like, these are men that used to put CDs in, much JB, in yeah. music work. Brass tacks. Stuff like that, you mm -hmm. know? So like, yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen a lot of that from young. I used to see th those people on TV and think, yo, they just showed the ends in the video. Like, you know, Toba Chung, rest in peace. Yes, you know, like that and that. It's a great name because that's a man that blew my mind when I heard him. Yeah, yeah, because I know, I know you've seen the video of him out doing his, the, the, the band of, uh, uh, of And he much sounded music. nothing like, uh, yes, that's a legendary one too, him on Much Music with the whole we sketch, EVS, yeah, all but, of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, God. Toba Chung was a man there. to me, he sounded, there's nothing about him that sounded unprofessional or amateur. It sounded like a man. So, you know what, I'm glad you brought that up because I noticed you said that in one interview where, you, you know, in Toronto... Part, like there was, there was just thrown out a sound at that at one point that was just kind of like it was still in the in, in in its infancy stage as far as hip hop. So outside of Toronto, you would hear it like it was very distinctive, you know. And it wasn't until like I remember you mentioning it like not too many artists want to talk about those those age those times because it was like the dinosaur ages. You're too. right. You're right. You're you know right. what I mean? Because you know it, it, it's the ugly duckling era. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but we made it through, you know what I mean? We made it through, and we're here now, and there's a lot of people in the city doing their thing. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Well, yeah. I, people like that, bro, I always got to pay homage to them, bro, because bro, I remember, like, getting on the bus and going to Flamo Plaza to, like, do the grocery of my dukes, right? Mm. And going in the store for her to do her lottery and seeing, like, the GCP album in there. And just thinking, What? Like they have an actual CD, you know. I used to think between the, the sound really for me started to change with between Point Blank and the GCP Mandem. The Toronto sound started to really form when when I like heard. You mean like actually coming? To yeah, Toronto. yeah. Because remember, now we had example in the states with the whole Mob Deep Wu Tang squad up, and you know, like we okay, yeah, all right, oh, man's on the block, we could do this too. I remember a lot of the men that were playing ball too were on the block. Something that people don't realize, they think that a lot of the basketball players were sick, are sick now. A lot of the men were sick back then, but they were just really in the streets. And yeah, it was and couldn't. Gunshot, dead, or jail. Like, bro, it's crazy. I know. It's bro, crazy, I know. I know I know a man that was one of the sickest ever, bro, in ball and got caught up on some street shit. And like anyone but imagine him them, now say, imagine him lead, now you know? imagine him now with all the resources that's there straight to the lead yeah but well, you, you know, know what bro before we never used to feel like we could really do much coming from here you know and that goes into what you were saying before about, about people not wanting to really talk about those times cause, yeah because we were insecure too about it mm -hmm. no lie you know what I mean because we, we heard what was going on in the, in, from, from New York you know what I mean we were, we were hearing it you know what bro, I mean I tell people all the time that I'll never forget you see, like, all of this Six Buzz and all of this Ray Ray and everyone's all the culture now and all of this stuff. <laughs> or I'll never forget when people used to look down on me for, like, talking the way that we talked, right? And I also remember, like, anyone who wasn't the man them mm -hmm. at school mm -hmm. used to just think that that's waste. That's, like, some, you know what I mean? Some vagrant, like, stream. Damn, it's on the news. Shit, people you know? are being deciphering the whole lingo now on the news. The newscasters are deciphering the lingo But this on is the, the biggest news. one. I remember when people would hear your record and say... This is good, but I can tell that you're from Toronto. That was like a main... People thought that you were like... That they... Like, you're doing industry talk when you're saying that. Like, you're in the know. You know what I'm saying? And to me, bro, that was always foolishness to me. You know? Because I always thought that, like... 
we were sick. I always thought our culture was sick. Mm-hmm. Well, it was you know, a melting pot. That's what it is. It was a melting pot, and 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 people didn't didn't grasp the the, the cosmopolitan of it. You know what I mean? It was it was it was it was really. I think it's the only true melting pot in the world. You know, I've been to all the other ones that they say are the melting pots. Mm-hmm. I've been to France. I've been to London. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you about that to, too. I've been to the state. I've been to New York, and you know what I mean. It's not, you know, there's, they have all the cultures, but you see the way that we're like so intertwined here. It's different. We all know about each other's thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I notice like people that I'm, my friends in America and stuff, they always are really impressed by that. Like how much I'll know about certain things. You know, I'll mm-hmm. meet a man that's Mexican in America, and because my one of my closest brethren's on the ends growing up was Mexican. I know about stuff that probably know the food, you know, you know, and it's not the big ones songs. in the store. Yeah. You know, you know certain I mean? songs too. You know what I mean? Cause I you went to their the, house, the shrine that they'll have in the yeah, front of the house yeah, when you walk yeah, in stuff like yeah. that, you know, I so, was like that. Like me growing up, I, would, I had dark skin, Bredgens, pale skin, European friends. You know what I mean? So it was like, I went to different homes here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, and yeah. I'm really, bro, I'm, I'm really in- interested in like, in, you know, culture, hit the history of people. I'm really interested in like why people speak how they speak, mm. you know, okay. and just even my own speech, how it's changed based on me from a kid to now and what my environment has done to affect that and, oh, you know, for sure. stuff for like sure. that I'm for really sure. interested in. So, sure. so the music thing, you, um, let's say, yeah, yeah, yeah so back was rapping. To, my uncles were rapping mm-hmm. and, um, I started rapping from young. Remember, I had the keyboard and stuff mm-hmm. too. So I would sit there and write songs on my keyboard, sing and rap while I'm playing and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you know? So I used to. And it, what really, like the rapper that really made me want to rap, because Bob Marley made me want to make music. He made me want to be an artist. He made me want to be on vibes. a stage. You felt the vibes. I just, bro, I just knew just felt the realist, vibes. You, know? you felt the vibes. Yeah. And from young, connected with me. And then I loved reggae and all of that. But then what made me. Like want to be a rapper was the Fugees because they had like the West Indian influence. It just made so it was it just made so, sense. It made so sense. sense. It was so interesting to me. And then and the way the production because they put that into the production it just spoke to me. You know what I'm saying? And my uncle had the vinyl. He was a DJ too. My uncle did everything. He's a rapper producer. He made sick beats. He taught me how to make beats. I noticed that with your beats still. That the influence, the, mm. the, like the, the 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 culture, the the radio influence yeah, it's in your yeah, beats. Yeah, like, must be. It must be. Like, like no, it's in there. Even yeah. with the, your flow, like yeah. you could be a dance or artist doing your thing yeah. with the, with your flow. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? So it's like, it, you, but you're just doing hip hop. Well, bro, my boy Sunny Diamonds, bro. He always said that if Trey could, if Trey really wanted to be a dance artist, he's convinced. There's two know? artists that I feel that that's sick. You, I'm bars. Yeah, 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 yeah. You and Bars. Well, he's from Jamaica, so he's yeah, like, he's you and Bars. Like, you know, he's like, born there. For sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, you know what I mean? yeah, yo. But, so, so uh, all right, so this is what happened. So you're making beats. Before beats. I even, so the way I started making beats, I was 11 years old. See, I got suspended from school. And remember, my uncle lived up the road. Mm-hmm. So my mom, my uncle's a man too, he always checked for me, you know? Come pick me up, bring me to play soccer, Ray, Ray, Ray. My mom said, you're not staying home all day. You think you're bad getting suspended, Ray, Ray. Go like by your uncle. Go watch cartoons all day. Yeah, yeah go yeah, by your uncle. Yeah. But I go by my uncle. I'm watching cartoons with him. You know what I mean? I'm on the block. You know? <laughs> but she doesn't want to be a part of it. That's yeah, what it is. Yeah, she's like, get out of here. I'm not going to be a part of the fuck. Yeah, yeah, so I go up there, and I'll never forget this, bro. I was, I was just like, I remember thinking, he's going to probably rail me up for getting suspended. Because he was like that. But I knew it was going to be a good, a good two weeks, you know? So I followed into the crib and he was sitting there with a little MIDI keyboard at the computer and he was Hold making on. a bass line. You got suspended for two weeks? Yeah, yeah. For what? Bro, I can't even remember what it was. It was... Two weeks is a long time, man. Actually, you know what? I remember, I remember what it was. It's when you, Peter Regan, bro. Man remembers his last yeah. name. That's how you know it's deep. Man, he called me a nigger in the washroom. <laughs> he called me a nigger in the washroom. And I... So you fed it to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and okay. Then... <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> yeah, but they, they're not believing me. That like, you know, so that's he, even more frustrating. Yeah. So he's like, fuck school. He didn't even get suspended because I was, I was beating him up. You know what I mean? So it's just Crazy. whatever. So I got suspended. So and you went to your uncle and so you thought he was going to deal with you a certain way. But he's yeah. like, you're playing video games. So and I was like, chill. whatever, I'm going to follow it up there. He's playing a bass line when I walk in, you know. 
and then I remember I'd always ask to go to the studio, and they just never ended up bringing me, you know? And I used to be, I used to hold a grudge against my uncles for that. Like, me? You're not bringing me to the studio? My cousin that didn't even really care about music, they carried her to the studio one time. I said, what? This is crazy. So I'm 11 years old. I walk in. He's making a bass line. I said, yo, what are you doing? He's like, I'm making a beat. I was like, on the computer? He was like, yeah. I was like, you can make beats on the computer? He's like, you want to learn? Bro, and I don't think he knew that, like, he just said, like, my dream to me that day, you know? With Tim, he's just like, yo, yeah, my, my, what my nephew was this? Like, what was this? 2002. Okay, what program was he using? Reason. Okay, that's the, that's the legendary one. Reason 2, I think it was. Yeah. So, a fr- a fr- Fruity Loops, that's, that's another one. So I started flexing on that. He taught me how to make beats, and then, bro, I just got addicted. Right. You know? And I was also, my mom from since So So when you, st- when you started gotten, making beats, were you still... Crafting your rapping skills along with it? Oh, yeah, because I started rapping from five, six years old. Me and my cousin used to write bars together, okay. my, my girl cousin. And uh, she used to like to sing and stuff like that, too. Okay. So I'm also taking piano lessons at the same time, okay. right? So my mom put me in that or whatever. And, and I, I wasn't one that's of those kids sick. who was like, oh, that's I, don't, very smart. I don't want to go to piano. Like, no, I but that's, that's, that's what you... That's you. Yeah, yeah, you know? So, like... Parents need to take the time to see what the gift that the child is pushing forward and then you got to foster it. Like, I remember as a child, my brother was big on dinosaurs, like into them to the point that he knows enough of the names. Like, I'm talking about young, but my parents never fostered it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And that's something that, but now, you know what's crazy? My youngest son, he's into dinosaurs. That's like, with, with my son, I'm trying to just keep my sharpest eye out for like, what? He loves, you know. Yeah, and, and then it's like, bro, I'm gonna give you what, the tools that you need, you know. Straight. So your uncle's fostering this, your mom's fostering this, sending you to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what I'm also doing these times, my grandpa, he's come back from Trinidad at this point. He was in the Trinidad. legend. Yeah, and he's come to stay in Canada now. And what he was doing was, because I was in piano class, right? So fast forward about a year into me making beats. My piano teacher got switched and I got a young guy and he was in like, a f- he used to improv and do free jazz and also make what school was weird this? electronic music. It's a school called Lippert Music Center okay. on Pape Avenue. I actually highly recommend so it. So are you in high school or in elementary school? I'm, I'm, I'm 12 years old. I'm in so elementary, elementary school. school. Okay. Yeah. So one day I show him, yo, you know, I make beats. He's like, you make beats? Because I saw a program on his computer. It must have been Ableton. Mm-hmm. And I said, that looks like a beat program. I said, mm-hmm. I make beats. He goes, say, say word. I said, yeah, my uncle taught me. I do that at his house. He said, let me hear something. I said, I'll bring a CD next time. So the next time I came, I followed with the CD. He listened to it. He said, bro, these are sick. Didn't believe me. He waited till my mom came and said, can I talk to you alone? And he said, yo, he brought a CD. He said he made beats with his uncle. I was like, yeah. My mom, too, because I've been so musical from so young, everything I do, even though she's like, yo, Trey's amazing, it's just, yeah, he makes beats. Like, she's not realizing that I'm 12 years old making beats, like, you know? She so does, does see that, like, how crazy it is. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Man. yeah. Doing some crazy stuff. But my uncle is. I remember my uncle being very encouraging and, and being like, telling like the he's rest of the band, yo, this guy, he's like, he's pushing, in, he's you know? pushing you, he's pushing you. So when I showed my piano teacher that, he said, listen, I'm going to stop teaching you how to play other people's music. I'm going to teach you how to play your own. So he started teaching me how to create my own compositions on the piano. Okay. And he would do stuff like bring me into the church next door to play on their huge pipe organ to help me get inspiration. You know, just having my hands on different tools sense. you know what I mean so you were you got a sensei so yeah I was going in bro he was he was a sick man and he he taught so. and, 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 and I feel like that's that's something even though you went and took piano lessons I think it's important when you're into whatever craft you're into you take on a, some type of apprenticeship bro with somebody that's do, been doing it and that, that I'm pretty sure that made a difference facts facts and I didn't even realize at the time what I was learning, but I did appreciate that the experience was special, that mm-hmm. what I was getting was special mm-hmm. and it was doing something for me, you know? And uh, so from there. So do you remember I the learned, first official beat like that you made? Like that's like, yeah. This yeah, is horrible it. beat, horrible beat, the first one. I remember the very first one I made. I remember how I made it, like just making every pattern. It was just stupid. But what happened is every year you have recitals. Right, if when you take piano mm-hmm. as you're going up in the grades, okay. so my school would have a summer recital every year. 
So by my third year, now I'm 12, I have this teacher, he's teaching me stuff. I'm going into the recital playing my own composition. See? And then I'm thinking I'm just going to go there and do that. Mm -hmm. And just the recital, whatever. You get graded on the recital too, but he's told the head lady of the school, yeah, Trey's coming with his own composition. So it's on the program. Mm -hmm. So she's introducing me saying, yeah, here's Trey playing his own thing and then everyone's like what this kid's about to go up there and play his own thing you up. 12 years old yeah. you know go there bang it out everyone big stand innovation like other people's parents are like oh my god you know but remember my grandpa's there anybody videotaped this was people no 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 it, no, it was it wasn't from that 2002, era yet? 2003 you know no, no. it was that era but well, not like that quite, yeah, so somebody's family has it yeah for sure somebody's got i remember people feeling so you need to let them know whoever has facts, that facts. please send on facts, let them I'll know well, what that. year was that 2003 maybe I was, well, it was Liquid school? Music Center If anyone has that Send on Please Yeah So yeah. So My grandpa's a big music man Right So he's there Making more noise than Everyone That's my grandson Going <laughs> off You know Cause he sees it Yeah Cause coming from where he's come from He's like what he Bro and it. I remember like In the reception After uh, people, like parents leaving their kids to come hail me up. Celebrity like grown life. man on a man, <laughs> like not even on like a. Oh, you're so good, little. Like a man come to me on the side, like yo, listen, I rate what you're doing. That was good. With like, look me in my eye as a man and tell me, you you did something special. The, the Bro, and I remember thinking energy to you. This I was like, yo, I like that. Like I like that respect that I earned, legitimately. You know. Mm -hmm. I feel no, I, f I don't feel no guilt about this respect. It's not like the respect that you, you get on the ends from fighting. It was legit. Like that. It was legit. You know what I mean? It was legit. And I also felt like it was genuine. So that pushed me a lot to do it. You know what I mean? From there, bro, it's over. And then my uncle got a mic in the same room where I was making beats. Taught myself how to record. You know what I mean? So from, from grade six, I'm bringing tracks to school, showing my local brethren to them. Like, yo, I'm recording. You know? So it's, yeah, I was on it from time. Wow, great six. That's crazy. So yeah. you know, so time goes on. You're doing your thing. So when did you feel like you, when did you start taking it seriously? Like, man's like Don Millie's, those guys that you know. Mm -hmm. Did you try to holler at them to say, yo, I got beats, yo, hold, yo let me, you know, or well, they're so they're older than me, but like they all like know my uncles and stuff. So they all grew up, you know. Man, like my uncles, man, like Don Milian, Jamal McGlore, mm -hmm. people like that. They're Shout all, out to Jam. you know, they all come from the same area. Mm -hmm. So I would always end up so in must rooms with people, you know. Who's Jera from Flemont? You must know Jera. It's true too. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Fit by face, you probably know. But remember, that's way up the road too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I lived closer. To those no, because you mentioned like Jam, so I figured you might know a one, two. Yeah, and he's that. back and forth too. Yeah. You know, he's he's a man like me too that knows people on yeah both ends of the, of the Don Mills strip. You know, that's how it was at, at one point. People, man, knew each other. If you were well, active, period, everyone, yeah, everyone yeah, knows yeah, each man, other, know each know? other. If you're active, man, yeah. know you. Yeah, but I'm a man too because I went to so much schools and stuff like that. I even oh, bounced sure. around more than the average for person. Sure. Plus for the sure. music, you know, enough for the people like. My first record ever on the radio that I had any involvement in ever was uh, a song called I'm a G. And it was um, Random Act, the group from Flemo that was like the, the newer group that okay. came after GCP. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And I did their first single. I produced it. I, I was like maybe 16, you okay. know? Uh, I'll never forget man like Johnny. Ra Rupp, Random Act, they, they do films too, right? Uh, no, no. There's... Uh, no, I was thinking of somebody else. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So there was like, in Random Act was like, man, like Papa. I shouted him out in the last freestyle that I did. Man, okay, like Cutty okay. and okay. Cutlass Holmes and, and Johnny One Pop and stuff. And like, they used to come through the studio I'd be at, which is Sonny Diamond's studio. Okay, okay. He was like taking me under his wing, you know? Okay, okay. And I remember Johnny One Pop gave me $300. It was my second beat I ever sold. First one I sold to my, my dog Pro. Second one I sold to Johnny One Pop. And like, how old were you? I was like 15. You know? Three bills for a 15, beat? 15, 16. Yeah, bro. I was going to school because me and my brethren used to make the beats. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny? Man, selling beats for way less now. Yeah, know, that's yeah, what you're yeah. selling it. Bro, back then the beats were more expensive. Because yeah. everyone wasn't making them. That's true. The computer, like, yo, bro, the computer, there was you... people that went to school with me would tell you, bro. Man, that went to Bishop Morocco, you tell you, I would go to school with bands in my pocket, bro, from beats. No word of a lie. Wow. You know? Because 
I was working out at the Diamond Factory and so much people are coming in and out. Because they were recorded with you know him. Yeah, saying, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. bro, from there now, it was a thing where... Like, how long did you, before you started dropping your singles and your, 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 your work? See, now this is the thing too. See, because of the time, things were different, right? Because of the mediums that people used to listen to music on. And the way that we used to consume music. Mm -hmm. So today, an artist coming out today, that's a lot. That's a very more clear question to answer. Mm -hmm. If you if you started like 2016, like you just go and look look on their Spotify. Oh, the first track I dropped was mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was again, man knew me as a producer more than anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like but all you those did stuff. a one two verses. That's basically that we say. Nah, it was separate, kind of. Okay. Because like so, like all those older Flamo guys that knew me, they knew me from being in Sunny Studio. And coming in and hearing me make beats, like, what? That's what the my youth's making, like, crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, like, man like Johnny would, like, see me because I have my younger brethren in Flemo. I'll go check them or whatever. And he'd see me at the, at the center and be like, yo, okay, what are you doing over here? Bro, make sure you send more beats, bro. Let me get the next beat CD. Mm -hmm. I'll just, because they're seeing me more often, it's putting it in their, in their, more in their head, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I would get those opportunities to get a song on the radio with, you know what I mean? Because I was just, bro, I was just so active in the studio, especially, just like always in there, you know? So what was the first song that was, of yours that was, that was produced by you on the radio? It was that one, I'm a G by Random Mac. Okay. First okay. time ever that I had anything out for real, you know? Okay. But what was going on those times, though, is that I had all my brethren that lived up the other direction of the road on VP. I was cool with them through school and then even we got closer through music because okay. we were all young rapping, right? Okay. Man like Jason Pack, still my dog to this day, you know, like them yeah, man I there where I met him when I was grade seven, you know what I mean? Okay. And I, that, that day I came to the ends to make a track, you know? So okay. from there I was more folk doing the music with them. Okay, okay. So I'm kind of doing that and because there's not really anywhere to put it, we're trying to figure out how we're going to get the music out because it's high quality. We're doing our own productions. We're doing hooks and everything. We're getting a good mix down from Sunny. So does YouTube, this, does YouTube... Didn't even start yet. No? You know what I mean? Remember, this is... We're talking 2003, 2004, 2005. YouTube okay. started 06. Okay. Right? So what we used to do is put songs on stuff like T.Wire, Vibe T.O., okay. Facebook. Dog, I'm telling you, Mandem went viral before viral was a thing, you know? I remember, because I went, I went to Bear Schools, and I remember coming into new schools, and people say, I remember you from that video. Yeah. You know okay, what I mean? So, okay, okay, okay. That was the thing, you know what I mean? And then what would happen would be, like, people would, and again, Johnny's the next man, too, who was, like, an older man who would more put me on tracks than other people, because he saw the talent okay. of, like... You know what I mean? He'd be like, yo, come in the booth and help me with this verse. Like, you're the rapper. You're sick. He would gas me up, you know? And he's a sick man to me. I'd be like, yo, he thinks I'm sick. I must be sick, you know? So you ghostwriting a little? It's not even ghostwriting because he's a man that will go off the top. Okay, okay, He'd okay. always go off the top. Before anyone was going off the top, he was sick off the top. And he would be like, should I say that? But he just had confidence in us. Mm -hmm. Man like Chops, too, would okay, be okay. there. Like, you know just what I mean? Just some feedback. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what would happen was they'd be making tracks. People like... Uh, People like um, my dog Rose, they were making a track in there. I remember there was a track of him and Propane, the next man I said that paid me for my first beat. And they need a third verse, and Sonny would be like, yo, why don't you put Trey on it? And they'd be like, yo, Trey, come in here, bro. If you, if you, oh, if you, the verse you spit is whack, you're not on the song. Like, you know, bad me up before I even go in the booth. And then I go in the that's booth and I man, ice see. it. That's Toronto man. But that it's was a way the, to boost you up, Yeah, though. yeah. That's how we boost each other. Because they know I'm going to kill yeah, it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Go in the booth, ice it. I remember there was a track, bro, that I did a verse on. And that was like, I remember everyone being like, yo, like going nuts. And people started just looking at me as a rapper more than a producer. To me, I was always just an artist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Men were like, yo, he has bars. So you're just bringing out this, this, this skills slowly to the world. Yeah. But so you're we're putting out these songs. Him. You're to our peers mostly and to kids in the in our little high school network that we have, you know? So by the time I get to 18, around that age, and I start for a few years, I've been discovering, I've just always been on the hunt for more music, more music, different music. I start discovering more UK like hip-hop, UK, uh, like their, the old stuff they had, the drum and bass. I'm discovering the grime music and I'm super getting like, I'm getting super deep into the grime stuff, you know? It's, like, mm -hmm. really intriguing me. Just everything about the culture and the similarities to what 
I was living mm-hmm. at the time, you know. So you had no family out in in London. None. None. So what? That's what really drove you out there. Yeah, yeah, fully. I went out there the first day I landed in London. I had a show to do. So did you have any connections out there? All based on my music. Okay. You okay. know. Okay. 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 So so I could explain that in this explanation mm-hmm. too. So as I get older now, we've been putting making these tracks, bro, and it's the ones where none of them are coming out. Because we had some older mans that were kind of like the gatekeepers above us, you know, in the area that were saying, nah, if you put the track out, it has to be proper. We have to get a grant for the video and you have to do things right. But we were kind of of the idea of like the new guerrilla style of what it is now. It's like, yo, just put, it, put out, it out and get see the what buzz happens. up there yeah. see what happens. Just see what happens. Like, I'm going to make a million more of these, you know. And that was the thing, too, because some of us, the younger ones, we were a lot more musical. It wasn't as hard for us. So just fab, let's make a tune. So that's what that, you know, when you said that, that's what I was going to say that for them man there, they probably have a few tunes. You got a satchel. Mm-hmm. You're like, I, I got more, fam. Yeah. <laughs> like these men that we're talking about, like they had like albums worth of actual hits. To this mm-hmm. day, I've, I've went back to one of them, to one of the albums. I'm like, bro, this should have come out, you know? So I'm getting frustrated. You know, I remember all one day, bro, we did like a video log. This is before people were really doing that. And we sat down and we edited it to make it look like a, like a TV show. We gave it an intro and everything. Bro, that's like people weren't really doing that. And we put the trailer on Facebook and the older men got mad. They started going on there, commenting on it, saying, yo, you guys look like clowns and shit like that, you know? Discouraging. Bro, and I'm just preening the whole thing. I'm like, what kind of like, fam, I was, but the- I've been doing music before I even met these niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why am I letting... It's, yo, I've heard this story many times and I've heard it. On a street level too, when it comes to slinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same story. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's like the circle of life. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know it's saying? like slow down and they do everything to slow you down. Yeah, and it's like come on, man, let me do my thing, yo. So one day, bro, I just said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna start putting my music on YouTube. I don't care. I'm just gonna slap it up there. So I had a freestyle that was on a Soldier Boy beat called Outer Space Flow. Boom, slap that on my YouTube, right? And I made it. This is a YouTube I had what made for this? the man. Them. This is 22, end of 09, beginning of 2010. Okay. I'm like 18, That's 19. When I just touched your 2010. I'm like 18, April. 19 these times. So then, but I'm getting into the grime thing as well these mm-hmm. times, right? So I've kind of dibbled and dabbled in it with my production and some so tracks that I recorded, right? One day I said, you know what? Let me put those out because like, it's like all I'm really listening to right now, you know? And I, I go through serious phases of music, too, where I'll just listen to a certain thing constantly, you know? I'm like, but that yeah. one was heavy. It was, like, one of the longest and the strongest, you know? Pause. So, boom. From there, I said, yeah, let me put one of these out. So when I put it on YouTube, I said, I got to post this on somewhere where people that like this will see it. Or else I'm playing myself. So, so you said, where is some, that? So I went on the Grime people. Forum, which was a big thing back then. Posted it. And I didn't even know. I was just like, just posted it like, yeah, this is a youth from Toronto. Doing his thing. Yeah. And it blew people's mind. And then I started getting a lot of traffic on it. I wake up, bro. I'll never forget, bro. I woke up the next day. The, the, it got posted on another blog on Grime Daily. And it got a thousand views in one night. And the man then called me. He's like, come up, come down. Let's celebrate. We're celebrating off of that. You know, it was like that big. Back then, man, we were getting views. You know, so big, like big. a big video in Toronto at the time would be a hundred thousand max, like hundred strong arm and those big, based big on, tracks. Yeah. Based on the demographic. Yes. Yes. So from there, just snowball and snowball. And what I'm doing now is I'm networking. So that's what got you out there. Cause I started, How long before did you go out there after you put that video up? Maybe a year. Quick things, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Come out. Year and a half. So yeah. what was the Toronto scene saying for you at that point that made you say, you know what? Yeah. You know what? I'm out. Well, I... Because you were making some money producing. You're making, you know... Yeah, like I was seeing that there's a way to, yeah. you know what I mean? Juggle a little thing out of this. Which is unlike most artists, by the way. You don't see that straight away. Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? So that's why it's important. Like when you're doing that music thing, don't just be one, like one track. No, no pun intended. Like... Yeah, so and even Sonny was a big thing behind that too because I remember because I was young, man would try to take advantage of me, come to me with a Gucci frames 
and some J's <laughs> and say, yo, let me get a beat. You know Stop what I mean? I'm, this I'm 16, I'm like, yeah, I'll Stop take these J's and some Like, it took me 20 minutes to make this beat. Yo, you know, so it's like, okay, I'm not letting no Is man it real violate though? you. Are they real? Who knows? Just Probably not. <laughs> you know, you're not petty you're not that. A man just has it in his trunk. Like, <laughs> and you're like, and yo, Sonny, tell me, like, yo, listen, yo, don't let no good. one violate you and give you no shoes for no beat. You're a real producer, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a I wasn't playing thing. games with it, bro. That's like, that, that's like, what was it? What was it? Was it was a casino or Goodfellas? Food? No, not yeah, Goodfellas when the man's like, yo, we don't shine shoes no more. You know what I mean? Like, man, I'm some big man. Yeah, 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 yeah. On big this. Facts. <laughs> big facts. Don't shine shoes no more, fam. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, yo, so you made your way out there within a year and then connected with people out there well so what was happening was i was using the internet bro and just super connecting with people right i knew that i was trying to get into something that was really far away you know and it wasn't you know my intention wasn't even to get into the scene out there or anything like that i just wanted people that liked what i made to listen to what i made mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so and i knew that most of the people were over uh, there the, was into it and at the same time you, you people were me up yeah other artists and certain men that are like that have YouTube channels so on their camera. The way band. I see it is like you, like on a business level, even with the music thing, you were very methodical because you're already thinking about targeting a market. It wasn't about business though. No, but 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 you were thinking about your market though, yeah, for yeah, your music. Yeah. That's what you have. There are people who get paid doing that for artists now, targeting targeting markets, and you were on that. And that's part of the reason why you went out there. Well, you know, those times in Toronto, though, it was there's another thing that we were told is that you couldn't ever make it from here, you know? So at the first chance I had to do anything different... Out of the, 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 the bucket mentality, you yeah, had, to, you had yeah. to get out of it. Yeah. I always say, you know, if, if, if you allow the city limit to limit your thinking, then it's going to be like that. But... Got to think further than the city limit, mm-hmm. and, and you could do that from then, home physically. You could yeah. physically be nowadays, there. especially. Think, yeah, especially. nowadays, especially. Yeah, especially you connect with so much people. You know what I mean? And then, and then, and then I think you're one of the. You know, I mean, there's older cats that hip hop heads that went to the states and whatnot. But as far as going to UK, it, for your era, you were one of the first ones, no? Like, like to really venture out there oh, bro, from Toronto, bro. To keep it a stack. I don't think I know another artist that left Toronto with no buzz in Toronto to go somewhere else and make a name for himself in that place. I didn't know an artist to do it before. The only one is pe- man that would do it in America. And the only man that really done it in America really was Drake. Yeah. And he yeah. was just starting at those yeah. times. But you see, like, literally what I, like, get you up You know what, when I, went to, when I went to, sorry to cut, cut you up. <clears throat> right before I went to the pen, I went to Florida. And funny, I don't know if you, Cardinal, official. So I was out talking to the man I'm out there. I'm like, trying to get a feedback of what, the, what, what they, they know like, about. Yes, then the Cardinals, what they like. And what specifically they liked about him was that melting pot twang. Because it's Florida. They yeah. Know about that. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So they did, you know what I mean? Well, that's so, a man too. They had love for him in, in London too. Enough, yeah. Back then, that yeah. was who more people knew about. But they again, didn't know Drake he's like, Canadian. he's another, before you guys, before you and Dre Bars, he's another guy that for sure could have done dance off. For sure. And he did do it. Yeah. He did yeah. Soka. Yeah. Every caravan, he had something that he's putting out there, you know? So, yeah, yeah. But, you know, even those guys, I used to look at them and be inspired by, I was inspired by anyone doing it. I wasn't inspired by fame or money. I was inspired by, like, that someone they, they, actively they're getting, doing, they're doing it. They're doing it. That Daniel was saying that, like, when he saw Maestro, because he did, he was in, he entered a contest with Lindo P early on. Up Lindo P. Yeah, yes. he did a contest on Electric Circus, yeah. and um, he... Maestro was there, mm. and Maestro was a bigger man for him. But just being a young youth and seeing Maestro, and apparently from the performance of Maestro at Electric Circus, he got signed. So he said seeing that process happen right before his eyes, mm. he was like, yo, I know exactly what I got to do now. That is crazy to see at those times as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? to see that. He's like, what? That's what's going on? It could happen? Mm-hmm. So, Definitely. So for you doing what you did, you inspired a lot of people. Maybe they don't come well, out and I'm, saying it. I'm sure with the because there's a lot of people that's going to UK now from Toronto. Like it seems like when that's our second home now. You know what I mean? 
Bro, it's crazy. You feel what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of traffic going back and forth. Bro, I remember people looking at me crazy, you know? I'm like, bro, what are you doing out there? But that's how it is when you're an innovator. Yeah. You have to be looked upon as crazy. Who's going to agree with you right yeah, away? Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what you are. Innovator in that, in that, in that regard. But, you know, I'm, I know the, uh, Daniel would probably agree too. Like, for my generation and his generation, the dream started at the studio. The dream was to be in a studio. The dream wasn't to be... Because that's the gym. Famous. Yeah, that's the, the gym. The dream was to be in the studio, you know? And that's what I used to dream of. I used to dream about being an artist, you know? So, when I, as I've grown into an artist and, you know, been out, you know, doing my career, mm-hmm. I've, been a, I've, I've been really appreciative of just being a fan of just doing it, like, you know? Um, Stick Matter. That was like your first official album, no? Depends on what you mean by official. I would say my first official album was Mal Maison, which came out in 2012, two years before. Okay, 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 okay. And that's, that was my favorite one before the one I just put out. Orphan Black? Yeah, Orphan Black is my favorite now. But okay. Mal Maison was my what, favorite. Before. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I had a couple projects before and in between, you know? Huh. I never little, seen little that. Things. I never seen that yeah. project. Malmaison is like. I never seen that project because I've been, you know, naturally when I have a guest on the show, I'm going to study, and I've been studying. I don't. That one's not on streaming or nothing. It's only on YouTube and stuff because that was. So I probably know some tracks from it, but I don't know the actual album. There right? wasn't really streaming those times, right? So what I what what I used to do was I had a a, a link on my website, okay. and we would track it that way. Okay. That got twenty thousand plus downloads, which was like. Wow, you know, so wow. okay, okay, okay. So, but then after that, was Stigmata. Stigmata was the one that was in stores and yeah, you, on iTunes official. and stuff like that. You had physical yeah. CDs. Yeah. You did, know. did you draw too? Did you do the artwork? No, 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 oh. no. We got an artist to do that. That's dope. Yeah. I love it. I'm as well. I was looking at it and like, yeah, that that person did this shit. They did what they're supposed to do. Yeah, no, they facts, did. facts, they facts, did. facts. So if you have a chance, look at the cover. I, bro, I'm actually right. so proud of all my my artwork for all. But my the new albums. one too, sick. Amazing. I love all it. From, <laughs> all from black? I love it, yeah. It's sick. I'm really proud of all of my artwork, man. You know? Really? That's it one thing I can reminds me of on. one of Ye's cover album. I know, well, that's kind of like where I got a bit of the inspiration yeah. from, too, was you like can to see create it. like a mascot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's yeah. what the whole koala. Yeah, I do. I, 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 yeah, I, I dig it. I dig it. But yeah, you put all stick matter, and you were actually... Got that on power on the show power. Yeah, 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 yeah. How did you like you? You have a manager, or you? This is what you like. Cause it seems like this is what you've been doing. You've been doing it on your own. No, well, I put that album up with a label. Um, they they're based out of LA and London. Okay. And uh, they have an in-house. You know, they they go out and look for syncs for you and stuff. They have they have the things. They yeah, do what they so, do, bro. It was like three years later after the song came out that they came and said oh yo they want to use it for power you know I just completely forgot about that because but you know that was bro that's another one that I was like proud of too you know like I don't know if you've seen the video for the title track Stigmata well for sure for sure it was very cinematic there's very few videos that you could show me coming from Toronto that are that to me are that good your hockey video and your your Stigmata video are very cinematic yeah yeah for sure for sure very, very cinematic for sure. If you have a chance, check those videos out. So I also feel like even that, you know, a lot of things is timing mm-hmm. and how things happen. Like I know that at the end of my journey, you know, when I leave this earth, I know that I'm leaving things to be proud of and things for my son to be like, yo, my dad, he was sick. Let me show you about my dad. Let me tell you about my dad. You know, now that I have a son, that's a, a really big part of it for me. You know, Straight. how old is your son? My son is turning three in January. Okay. 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 So. How is that for you having a child? Great, it's the, it's the best thing I ever did, ever. Yeah, eh? you know? yeah. It's the it's, bro. It's made me like the best person that I, that I've ever been to. You know, you and the mother are together. You still? No, no, no. But you guys co-parent together. Yes, 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 okay, yes. Okay. And that's and, positive. Yeah, and it's going well. You know, like so my son has grown into a great. When Daniel was here, he was talking about the difficulties he has with the mother of his. I saw that. Yeah. So, what advice? What what worked for you? That that made it. Even though you guys are not together, what worked for you? What do you what do you see? 
Because you're around a man, what do you see? And you know a hear story. Mm-hmm. What do you see that you did different from the other man? Yeah. Okay. Bro, there was a man, I watched him. I watched him, like, while my son, while I'm coming into being a father for the first time. And, like, while I'm, bro, I watched him, like, his whole situation crumble. Can't see his kids and et cetera, et cetera. And between watch seeing that and the reasonings I would have with my pops, this is the first thing, bro. Like, my son has taught me serious self-control. It's very hard to get me very angry now. You know, it's very hard. Because you know what's on, what's, what's, what's on the line. Yeah. And my thing is, you know when you see them express a little that frustration that they can't control? It just, ugh, they get... Bro, that kind of scares me because I know what it could turn into. And I know as, that as, I can't... As they grow older. I know that I can't teach him what I'm not. I can't tell him, yo, self-control and Ray Ray. And I we're, can't... We're not exemplifying in that. Exactly. So, you know, that's a big thing that he helped me, that my son helped me learn. And that I think the man that need to learn, because not because we're wilding out and whatever, but just even, you know, microaggressions between you and the balance. mother. Yeah. And between whoever, it's like, you're, there's nothing you can gain out of arguing with the mother of your child or the father of your child, depending man or woman, you know? Child's already here. There's, everything's signed and sealed already. Right. You know what we can do, though? We can figure out what's the best for the kid right now. And what's the best that we can do right now, you know? So, and as, bro, whatever, it doesn't matter what's happening between you and the, and the child's mom. If you are putting the child first, both of you, everything will be fine, you know? Communication and, is key. And, 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 and is I key. really believe that, you know? So, that's good to know. Like, I see I'm, a lot I'm of happy, them. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm, you know, I'm happy, more importantly, for your son because he benefits from that. Exactly, exactly. Like a lot of people don't realize it because parents get all selfish and becomes tunnel vision, and it's like it's like a beef thing between them two. It's like the child's right there watching yeah, this grow. Yeah, you know bro. I mean? When I'm, I grew up around so much people that were baby fathers and baby mothers, and I saw how they dealt with it. I saw how things played out, the dynamics, and I've seen a lot of it firsthand. I know a lot of the mistakes you can make, you know? So luckily for me, I had my son at 25 years of age, 26 years of age, you know? So you're mature, because they say that uh, you don't fully mature till you're 24. Yeah, and I definitely wasn't mature before then, mm-hmm. you know? And we still, and it's not to say after 25 you're, you're done. Fully, yeah. No, I mean like, you know, like you, you have a grasp of what's really going on, and that's where the whole not getting angry because you know what's on the line, because I was 22. And pretty much sacrificed my daughter just for my own agenda and ego. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I paid for that just not be not being there. You yeah. know what I mean? So you know, I'm still paying for the blowback of it, you know? But it is what it is, you know. But yeah, yo, so that's dope, you know, that, that that you have a son and you're doing your thing with your son, you know? What's your favorite thing you like to do with your son? My favorite thing I like to do with my son right now I'm loving playing in the snow with him. <laughs> like he's just he, he's so happy you know what's so it, funny you know? <laughs> I'm laughing because my, my empress she's originally from Winnipeg so she grew up around a lot of snow it's not to say we didn't get snow no yet, but, but they have the real snow I know about out there yeah so and she wants she wants to get to bargain to bargain for them to go sleds go sledding and mm-hmm. I'm like yo man like I never did that as a you cause no. I was no cause I was like yo that's madness to me yo like hurling, I was on that hurling down the hill yo yeah no man. Yeah. There's certain things I, as a teenager, there's a certain risk I took doing f- fuckery. Yeah, yeah. But playing to throw myself like just <laughs> no to throw myself down a plane. Nah. I love nah. tobogganing. Man. So she got the sleds yesterday. And they went down the little hill. You know, that was cool. Yeah, they they love that too. They love it, kids. So that's why you just play with it, play him in the snow. Yeah, I play in the snow. He just. He likes to watch the snow happen. He likes to throw it in the air. Isn't just, it beautiful know? to watch life through their eyes and look at what you for so many years have Skip forgotten? Over. And yep. just that's why they say it's important to be childlike, but not childish. It brings me back to like because my son spends a lot of time at my grandmother's house, so and my grandma keeps everything, and there's all the toys in there are all my old toys. Oh. So there's stuff that he's playing with that is like from the 90s that I got. 
that's like you know some of those things will become family heirlooms yeah all down to the pot that i heat up his milk in is the pot that we used to get our milk heated up in because my grandma doesn't throw away things she what? takes care of her stuff yo you know? that it wasn't until sick. one day i was i was because you know it's just a pot that you warm up stuff in and one day i'm there doing it, i'm like wait this is the, this pot. Is the same thing we've been had this you know? it's just like it's <laughs> trippy crazy. you know so that's crazy that's crazy yo so now after stigmata came uh you dropped that which was you know many well received and then um orphan black it took you what four years to drop yeah you're yeah. working on that yeah in between that you're producing dropping little features here there, yeah yeah doing yeah. your little thing right you're mm-hmm, still doing mm-hmm. your thing um what year was it that, that we ran into you that I said uh, that, that was probably right when Stigmata dropped or yeah, around it yeah, so 2014 yeah, yeah. I was just yeah we were just talking about how when I first really got into his music was 2014 you would do he was doing a show he was opening for J. Cole and I was with Raz Fresco you know doing some stuff with him and that's when I actually met my, my homie Dayton my cameraman he was there he lived around the corner because it was J. Cole head so it's crazy and I remember, I remember that show you had issues with your DJ had issues yeah yeah you know what I mean but you saved it being a professional yeah yeah I remember that I remember it I'm like yo this man held it down you know what I mean so that's how you, that's how I knew I was like okay and you know the only reason well I guess I should say it for the people that are listening is that I almost got booed off the stage because my DJ was having technical difficulties people wanted J. Cole to come out so they were restless mm-hmm. so they start booing and saying bring out J. Cole yeah, or whatever, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. while the technical, technical difficulties, difficulties are going because that what people don't realize is like yo like the show must go on mm-hmm. you can't really have technical difficulty when, when this, people are right there you can't be like yo hold on yeah people are not like that not and like I remembered that. that it happened to me back in the day in like 2010 2011 I was doing like some little show at like a weed calf and like we had technical difficulties and when I came off stage we got it together but when I came off stage one of the men said yo because they were in the crowd they said yo you should have just spit a acapella and I remembered that. I said, if that ever happens to me again, I'm spitting acapella. And it happened to me once before that time at J. Cole. But it wasn't even as severe. But then it happened to me on that day and I felt the booing starting. You know, two men are booing, two buddies that came together. And then someone hears it on that side and they start so and started beating. You know what I'm saying? I started getting, that's fine. And, and that's one thing as an artist you got to do. Like, yo, like when you're on the spot, when things don't go as planned, fam. And it was humbling. Because totally, yeah. to me, I'm too sick of a man for you to boo me. You know, it's like when Drake went, when Drake went to that thing the other day and they booed him and bare people are saying, "How are you gonna boo Drake? He's done." Blah, blah, blah. Which, like, people are gonna. I don't, said, it was in his crowd, right? And what Drake said, I don't know what he was doing there. What Drake said is what I learned from that experience, which is like, bro, it doesn't matter how good you actually are; you're only as good as you are that night, or maybe it's those people don't want to see what you can do, mm-hmm. and he's fine with that. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and it's that's their choice. To, yeah, it's their choice. You know. So it was kind of humbling because I'm like, bro, anyone could get it. When I when it was happening to me, that's how I felt because I, I feel like I'm too sick for you to move, you know? <laughs> so so after that... I start spitting the acapella yeah, yeah. and I get it back. But guess what happens? When that performance ended, you know what? how it ended in? They're calling for an encore. So I went from about to get I remember. To I remember. bring him back, bring him back because they cut my, sh- my I thing remember. short for swearing. I remember. You know? I've been kicked off hella stages for swearing. He has footage. He's going to send it to me. And as we're talking right now, I'm showing them the footage. Sick, sick, sick. You know what what slice it in there. Yeah. Sick. I'm showing them footage. You know what I mean? It's crazy, yo. But yeah, so Off of Black is a new project. When did that drop? July 26th. Okay. 27th? July yeah. 27th? I think you're wrong still. I think it's I think it's twenty six. <laughs> Check it for me, please. So yeah, uh, so that dropped, and the first single was hockey, right? Yes, the first single was hockey. Yeah. It was dope. To, uh, that I told you that was a respect, respect. Uh, you know what I mean? Cinematic and whatnot. Because me and me and him do music videos too. We shoot music videos, so you know, I'm always into watching it. So even when you said stick matter, people don't want to talk. Like at the end of stick matter, I'm like looking at the picture, I'm like. Is that, a re- is that a shot or did the man them draw, like, is that a graphic thing? You know no, what I'm no, talking yeah, about? Yeah, that was a real shot. That looks sad. Yeah. Even if even, you have a chance to watch that video, at, 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 at the end of the video, there's that closing scene. I'm like, that looks so serene. Yo, even the colors that day, we didn't do much post Where was that? to edit Where that. That was in Calabasas, in Cali. Fuck. Yeah. It looks like we're in the Maybe. middle of, like, 
it looks dope, you know, uh, like it looks Arabic or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks dope, but it's funny yeah. while I'm shooting, people are on the set because we had a big set and trailers and everything it was a sick. Okay, video. big tie. And I remember <laughs> people on the set are telling me, "Yo, so that's the Kardashian house. That's Justin Bieber owns that house. That's so they're man, they're waking Damon, up to like, that every day to that view, like that skyline. The way the sky looked, looks what's so doing sick. the back to the colors? Because what we did was we did like a. We didn't do much post for colors. We did a like a inversion of temperature kind mm. of thing. That's why when you see me there, the trees are like a weird. He does purple that. kind of. He does that. He does that. He probably knows what I'm talking about. He does that when we edit. Yeah. So, but what made the colors so rich that day when the sun was setting? Because that was the real sunset. Was it's all the dust coming from how dry it is and. That desert kind of terrain, right? Don't mind us. This is just the inner nerd talking <laughs> right now. We get into this technical of, yeah, of, this, yeah. of this music thing. You know what I mean? But yeah, I was just when I seen the video, I'm like, I'm gonna ask him, yo, because that looks too sick. Did, and is that graphic? Because that looks too that's sick. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm so proud of it, bro. Because like a man has to ask that question. You know, that so, looks too sick. Big up Andy Hines. He he directed that. Okay. So yeah, Alpha Black drop. Blue Water, I don't know if he, that's my favorite track. It's a whole bunch of tracks Respect. on it. Like, I go ham, you know what I mean? Listen to your shit, yo. Like, Respect, bro. I, I, I can't go to the gym listen to your shit because I, I can't keep up. I might fuck my shit up. I'm trying to fucking work out hard. You know what I mean? Get an injury. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm trying to keep up with Trey. <laughs> yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah, yo, straight. But yeah, the album goes hard, yo. Thank you, bro. What's your favorite track on the album? My favorite track on there is probably make a move okay. which one did which one do you do you feel that like you're getting the most that's well received out there that you'd like well do you just like yo honestly aside from the like hockey is the one that i'll get more because it got playlisted on spot you know mm -hmm. but the one that the people really tell me they love the two is blue water that you said you mm -hmm. like people really they really fuck with that track you have a video yet for that no i don't have a video for don't that. mess around do it fam this, that one is smooth sim sima with murky ace is the other one that people people love i see the chemistry with you and you that the, the, the man is still yo murky ace yo he's sick yo. yeah that's my dog bro that's yeah. like yeah, yeah that's he, one of the people you linked out there yeah yeah that's bro that's like like my close touch, friend, touch on London and like how's life out there? Like you, you actually go out, stay out there. You be out there for a few months sometimes at a time. What's the most? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've, bro, I've basically been living there on and off since 2011. You know. Okay, okay. My son is born out there. Oh, your son lives out there? No, he lives here now. Oh, okay. okay. But he he's born out there and he lived there. Okay. You know, okay. He's now losing the accent and getting the. Okay. Getting is my his mom from more. out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um. Bro, See, it's that's like crazy. really second home, you know? That's crazy. Even through the music brought you to that woman that gave birth to your child. That's crazy, yo. And through... It's crazy that... What's your son's name? I never... You? Mishael. Mishael? Mishael, yeah. Is that a mix of your names? Was there, is there, def, was there a meaning No, it? I was, it was just names we were going through. Mishael means he who is like God. Okay. That's what it means, you know? Yeah. In like... The old, before Amharic, okay. what they were speaking that led into Amharic, it yeah. meant that in that language. My, you know? my, my, my son's name is Morocco, and my youngest son's name is Messiah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, I read yeah. that. I read yeah. that. Morocco and Messiah. Yeah, yeah. I read yeah. that. My daughter's name is Tatiana. You know? I read that. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. But yeah, so... Um, you're saying those... It's the like second home, though. You know, yeah, yeah, London. Yeah. London, yeah. yes. And I'm a man where... Anywhere I go, bro, I try to get a taste of real life, you know? So when I, was, when I went back to Jamaica, I was trying to get a taste of the real everyday life. When to I go, go to, to the Trinidad, Garrison. it's yeah. the same thing. Trinidad's a little different, though, because I've, I've been there about six times, you know? I've mm -hmm. been going there from young. So you're familiar? Yeah. Familiar. So when I went to London, because I already had the love for the culture and all of that, and Ray, 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 you know what I'm saying? That's where, that's where I, even, I even dove more into it, right? But then because I'm over there alone... When you're over in a new country alone like that, it forces you. Good people will look out for you and they'll take to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the people that, I, that I'm, after all these years now, the people that I'm actually cool with and spend my time with and stay with when I go over there, it's real people, good people. You know what yeah. I mean? That man, man like Murky who like, bro, I, anything, on any day I could be anywhere, bro, and have nowhere to go. So I, I don't even have to ask. I'll show up to the man's house and tell his mom, 
she won't even ask. She'll be like, oh, Trey, open the door and let me in. One of, one of the first dude, the first dude that person I ever interviewed was Jeru, the damager. And he talked about going out to making that New York move to Europe. And he's talking about, sh like, when you uh, travel and you're out in the foreign place, you have to check your insecurities because now it's like you got to make new friends. Facts. You're forced to make new friends. Facts. Facts. You know, you Whereas don't realize coming that. from where we come from, you don't like to make new friends. Either. NFL, no new friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> NFL, no new friends, yo. That's crazy. So, yeah, it's crazy how it forced you to have to get immersed in, with the people and plus the fact that you just like being around the real. So That's the thing, too, is like when I certain, again, back to Murky, when, I, when I'm around Murky, it's like it reminds me of where I come from. You know, his mom, like, reminds me of my mom so much. No, but I know, no, for the man from London, like, just remind me of the man yo. Yeah, overall, too, <laughs> yeah, yeah, overall. Like, it looked like the man to me. Which is another reason why I love the culture, <laughs> you, you know? know what I mean? Because yeah. even though there was all that grime and UK garage music and house and deep house and jungle and everything to, and dubstep to go and all the raving and everything to get involved in, there was also, like, Brixton Splash in the summertime. And I'll be out there outside of... Murky's family has a Jamaican food shop mm -hmm. right in the middle of Brixton. Everyone knows. How's the food out there? People say it's worse than it is. I've had some really good food, most of it in But it's not in, like here, though. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah, we can't, even, we can't even talk over here at all, at all, at all. We are very lucky, bro. When it comes I know. To the food team, I just seen a post on Reddit today. Someone took a picture just looking up a street downtown. It must have been Spadina or something. And it was just there, signs sticking out of different kinds of food. It was like sushi, Jamaican. Full, whatever like just, you want, you know yo, what I'm saying? whatever you want, the whole world on one strip. Yeah, <laughs> one thing that's hard to find that I've found traveling is good Greek food. Okay, compared okay. to how we can get it here, okay, okay, okay. okay. I found that that's hard to find in other, in other, yeah, places. yeah, the authenticness of it, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Even in London, they'll more have Turkish food, or you okay, know, okay, okay, that's sick, that's sick, but yeah, you know, to, to, to close out, you know, you know, thank you for coming out, but. My last question is the evolution of hip-hop. What do you think? This is the music that you've known all your life, pretty much. What do you think of the evolution of it, and where do you see going and wanting? Well, bro, I don't even, I don't want to get long-winded again, and I can feel myself going there, because I like this question. I know, right? I, I know, I know, because you can get technical with it. Yeah, the first thing is, because for me, I don't even consider myself a hip-hop head. Now, I know a lot about hip-hop, and I've listened to a lot of hip-hop in my life, but I've just listened to a lot of music in my life. I just happened to take on to rapping because my uncles rapped, and it just, being a black boy, the media... So you could have been a singer it, just, if you had a, like somebody singing in your... Yeah. Which you do sing, by the way, if people don't know, like you do... do, you, do you and that was the singing. first thing I did, you know? But to me, it wasn't about rapping or singing. It was always about music and the overall art, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes when I speak about hip hop, I kind of feel a little bit a little bit guilty because I don't feel as attached to it to as, speak as with as the head. As, yeah, you know. But I know I have as much knowledge as most of them, right? Because you're a student. Yeah, and especially music wise, you know, history. Certain man could outdate me <laughs> for forever. Sure, for you know? sure, you're but only here for so long. This is what I'll say. Because you know, grime is a music where grime started in. 2000, 2001, and now they have, and when Grime came out, it came out of UK Garage, and then they said, no, this is a new thing, they're, the beats are darker, and they're spinning about their fuckery and violence and whatever, so it can't be this garage thing that we do in the club for the gal them. Same time when that's happening, dubstep is kind of coming up in the same kind of way, and dubstep is pushing the Grime guys out, they don't like the energy they bring, they want to keep it more instrumental, they don't want you to spit you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then now, fast forward 8, 10 years later, they have the UK drill coming up. And the UK drill has the same energy that Grime did 15 years ago. And you know what? When I was hearing the, the, the Grime beats, I'm like, yo, this is like drill music. This, this is all the drill. The, like drill music. It has that influence. Well, you. the UK's kind of taken over the drill thing too because now what's known as the drill sound is what is the UK drill sound. Wow. That was completely different from what so Chicago it's drill personified was. Personified now. Yeah. So like all like the Brooklyn stuff, that's all London producers. And what? Guys, a couple guys from Amsterdam and stuff. 
Yeah, right? eh? that are that are did it leave all you guys? All about smoke and all of that, man. That all their beats is just you know youths from London and shit. So, Sick. so Sick. a lot and of people see, in that grime, goes into the evolution of hip hop. Right a lot there. of people in grime don't like the fact that UK drill ha- has the momentum that it does as a movement and everything, and they they really want to separate the two. I think it would be more healthy to let them both grow together, and I also think that. If grime was more accepting, I don't think the youths would have labeled this sound as so separate. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What it makes it does, the youths push back against it. You guys are old, that shit's nerdy, we don't make that no more. This is, we make drill, this is greasy. You go to any high school in London, that's what the youths are listening to. You know what I mean? And that's kind of the litmus test for me. Okay. So with hip-hop now, I, look at, I try to look at them from the same context. The thing about hip hop, though, is that they they allowed it to grow and allowed the subgenres to exist underneath of it. So there's the trap, there's the boom bap, there's you know even in the '90s there was different. There was the jiggy stuff, and then there was the G funk, but there was the West Coast stuff that wasn't G funk, but mm-hmm. it was that West Coast. And then Biggie is taking the West Coast sounds and putting it, you know what I mean? And they let that evolution happen. There's obviously people that push back against it. And oh, I think sure. now gatekeepers, certain gate, gatekeepers. I, th- I think now. People from my generation and the ones before, you know, I'm 28 now. People from my generations and the ones before, I think that we could be, we could be a little more conscious of not being like the people that we hated coming up. They used to say, that's not music. That's not, you know what I mean? I remember my, my, my grandpa, you know what I mean? Telling me, bro, you guys just make these beats, just four bar loops, it's garbage. You know, like, I'm going to be real with you as much as I like my purest music like I'll listen to your, to Danny O's album I'll listen to your album but guess what I'll bump Quando Rondo too yeah that's, and that's that me mother, too that that's motherfucker too. is crazy talented that's me too that's me like, too like it's crazy you know what I mean cause like especially with the new music with the, like how you said the new batch of artists they're very musical so even if they're doing the grimy or whatever there's still like this musical element that's just beyond, like you can't deny it. it can't deny it. Yeah, yeah. Can't deny it. Bro, if you love music, you're going to love it. You know? <laughs> it's Bro, crazy. every music that came around, they said, this is whack. This is whack. Bro, I was just, I was just, uh, I was just reading about the song called, there's a song, an old dad song called Pump Up the Volume. If man hear this song, you'll know what song it is. It's been in every movie, everything. I know that track. So that track was like one of the first tracks to take us vocal and sample it the vocal and make that the main thing of the, the thing, track and yeah. they took it from a track that came out earlier that year and that was unprecedented and people so it's like the first rinsed remix. that song yeah people rinsed that song bro people said yo that gar- it went number one and everything but people mean, tried that's to a say big it was track. whack even certain men that were involved in making it didn't like the final outcome you know what I'm saying but that song created a template for a lot of cause when you think about it it's very simple and kind of just straight to the point. It's just vibes. Just yeah. vibes. Fuck like a bass volume, line, drum. Volume, yeah, volume. yeah, that's it. Get it, get it, get it you going. Know what I'm yeah. And people hate it on that. So that's my thing about the evolution of hip hop. It's like, bro, I can't believe, I can't believe that the man didn't forget that people used to tell us that what we're doing is whack just because it was new. Well, Danny, back to Danny, you were saying when he got into it, he never fathom or think about making money off of it and having a big house or what, like... Not to say that's what he has, but it's just this, what this artist is able to do now. You know what I mean? So just to be able to do that now, like, yeah, people who are supporting teams, yo. I had a conversation with Murky just a couple of days ago where we were saying to each other that if you would have came to us at 60 and told us everything we did up to this day, we would have looked at you and said, fuck out of here. No way. You know what I'm saying? And here I am feeling like, Oh, I should be doing more. I should whatever, whatever. But then no, when I keep it, I'm like, nah, man. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And know? that's key right there I, to end off before to end off on that is that you gotta know that you, you, we all have our own pa- space. When you were born, there's a time your and own space. Path, your own yeah. journey. When you were born, there's a time and space for you, for your energy. Born. And as time goes on, this is again childlike, not childish. As time goes on, you know, we become adults, get caught up in time, or. You know, Lose, lose the, suppress the gift in us just to work, but just stay within your timeline. Yeah, even if you gotta work, if you have a dream or gift, work on it. Keep staying within your timeline. Don't give it up. You know what I mean? For nothing, because you never know, man. Facts, facts. You never know. That's great advice. And at the end of the day, you can say you did it your way. 
You feel what I'm saying? That's a big part of it. You feel what I'm saying? So here we are with this book, the 27th letters book. You know, um, everybody knows the story, you know, being incarcerated, I have to write my daughter. I wrote it once a month, and when I came out, the, those letters became a book. Am I, I getting a copy? Hell yeah, okay. this is yours. <laughs> Bro, I seen this already too, and I was like, yo, I want that book, bro. So, yo, right here is this book. Is your daughter here? Yeah, Tatiana. Beautiful. So, um, here I've had all my guests wrote in it, and the idea is to write, write something to, for example, your son, people you love, your mother, your fans, your dad. Imagine going, being away from them for a long time. And not knowing when you're gonna come back or even if you're gonna make it back. What is the little advice you could give them? Just don't say it, just write it and date it and sign it. You know? Thank you very much for coming out. Um, let them know your handle. What, like, how, how can they get in contact with Everything you? Everything at Trey Mission, T R E Mission. Okay, uh, anything coming up, coming out, new videos. You have any new videos for, for that's, that you're working on that's gonna come out for this? For Orphan Black, any single. Bro, I'm just honestly, I'm just doing it as it comes and how it feels right now. I'm back to that, you know. Okay. However, I feel and how it comes. Okay, okay. That's okay. how I'm gonna give it to the people. Okay. Again, thank you again for coming out. Salute to everybody for joining us. Peace.